If this is the center of the cluster, and you know, Sergei Star was over there. The black hole remains well, in a state of semi-retirement. But nevertheless, this is a bit of a puzzle that there are so many of the blue stars. Will it become so active that, again? Working in the cold, clear air of the Antarctic, one group of radio astronomers surveyed the broader region surrounding the galactic center. Data from their South Pole telescope contained signs that a spectacular flare-up is slowly materializing. A huge ring of gas looms beyond the galactic center. When it accumulates some 300 million solar masses worth of matter, it will reach a tipping point. The cloud will begin to funnel into a second ring that orbits close to the center. This inner ring will condense, then erupt with star formation, before spiraling down toward the ravenous black hole. As the cloud falls into it, the black hole will erupt in a blaze of glory visible across much of the universe. Don't wait around for them. Such outbursts happen every 400 million years or so. There is another much smaller cloud that is now on a black hole rendezvous. The cloud, weighing several times the mass of Earth, approached ground zero. This simulation shows the cloud passing within less than a fifth of a light year. It stretched out as the black hole began ripping it apart. Its momentum will carry most of it swirling past the black hole. In time, it will settle into an orbit and slowly but surely collapse into the center. Meanwhile, on a rocky outpost, 25,000 light years from the turmoil of the galactic center, astronomers continue to watch for surprises. They have found ways to track patterns of change shaping our universe over billions of years' time. And yet, it's often the small and sudden events that feed their sense of wonder. Since they started their work, these groups became the first to witness an object making a complete orbit around the center of the galaxy. The star S2 does it every 16 Earth years. Its dimmer cousin, S102, goes around every 11.5 years. No doubt, over the course of their next orbits, we'll answer many of the questions that swirl around their companion, the supermassive black hole. How did it form and shape the galaxy that surrounds it? Will it one day, from the dim heart of the Milky Way, become bright and powerful enough to light up the universe? How did the universe come to be? Why does it look the way it does? How did galaxies form? Planets? And solar systems? Life? To find the answers, a series of missions has transported a battery of 
high-tech instruments above Earth's atmosphere. To peer into the most violent processes in nature and explore the mysterious workings of the high energy universe. Decades ago, high energy astronomy was motivated by a number of basic questions. Do supermassive black holes really exist? What are quasi-stellar objects, or quasars? Are they solitary objects in the vast darkness? Or are they part of larger structures? In the early 80s, a diffuse X-ray glow was seen filling the night sky. What was it? Bursts of ultra-high energy gamma radiation appeared almost once a day, lasting seconds, or as long as a day. Are these events nearby, even within our solar system? Or are they extremely distant and highly energetic? Finally, Astronomers suspected that supernovae were violent explosions. But what was their exact nature? We now know that they are the final moments in the lives of large stars. And that they are the source of elements that make up our bodies. Calcium, iron, carbon, and so on. Because high-energy light does not penetrate our atmosphere, scientists launched a fleet of space observatories designed to capture wavelength bands from gamma ray to infrared. These wavelengths tell us the temperature of matter in an object. Gamma rays and X-rays tens to hundreds of millions of degrees. Ultraviolet, hundreds of thousands. Visible light, tens of thousands. Infrared, hundreds of degrees. Here is a Hubble Space Telescope image of Cassiopeia A. It shows the visible remnant of a supernova, glowing at about 10 or 20,000 degrees Celsius. Here is an image from the Chandra X-ray Observatory, showing gas heated to tens of millions of degrees. Some of the first images from the Hubble telescope in 1994 captured the galaxy M87. For the first time, astronomers spotted the hot gas swirling around its central region. Knowing the scale of this picture and the speed of the gas, astronomers discovered that within a volume of less than a solar system, there is an object that weighs some three billion times the mass of the sun. Nothing that dense can be anything but a black hole. Over the following years, additional discoveries showed not only that supermassive black holes exist, but they lurk at the core of every large galaxy, including our own Milky Way. This animation shows a black hole moving through space. As an unsuspecting star gets too close, 
the black hole's gravity tears it apart. That creates a so-called accretion disk of hot gas and dust rotating rapidly around the black hole. Within the disk, charged particles spin off magnetic fields. They channel some of the inflowing matter out in jets so powerful they move at nearly the speed of light. The closer you get to a black hole, the higher the temperatures, 10 million or more degrees. As a result, if you want to study the inner parts of the accretion disk, you have to look at high-energy gamma and X-rays. This inner region can be hot and bright enough to shine across the depths of space, becoming a quasar. The brightest and most active quasars are probably consuming matter at a high rate. In this Hubble image, we see a radio jet coming out of the center of a galaxy. Zooming in, we see the accretion disk and a dark central region. Like Sauron in his dark tower, Black holes are known for being terrifying, invisible sources of death and destruction. Black holes are such powerful gravitational monsters that they warp and twist the fabric of space-time. If you get up close, you'd see something like this an accretion disk visible from both above and below. There is an inner ring caused by light that goes all the way around the black hole before escaping and eventually making it to us. It's actually difficult to get close to a black hole. Gas orbiting the event horizon can never actually reach it unless it first sheds its angular momentum. To understand how this can happen, watch a roller skating maneuver in which one skater catapults the other forward. The skater on the inside whips the partner around, transferring angular momentum outwards and slowing down in the process. Around real black holes, it's magnetic fields that sap the angular momentum of the disk, allowing some gas to fall in while throwing the rest out into space. Like rubber bands, these magnetic fields can stretch until the point where they snap, releasing massive amounts of energy and heating the gas to millions or even billions of degrees. You can see this in the magnetically active corona of our sun, where superheated gas shines very brightly in X-rays. One of the remarkable effects of a black hole's extreme gravity is predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. It holds that space-time is not only curved, but twisted. In this computer simulation of particles plunging into a black hole, you can see the effect of this twisting right outside of the event horizon, where particles are being swept around in a counterclockwise swirl at nearly the speed of light. Taken together, 
The pulling, twisting, and slinging of gas by the black hole leads to ultra-high energy particles and powerful jets. We're just beginning to scratch the surface of what Einstein's theory predicts. Today, the New Star mission is the first telescope to look at the universe in high energy or blue X-rays. This is a Hubble Space Telescope image of the nearby galaxy Messier 82, seen in black and white. This is what its warm, dusty regions would look like if you could only see it in the red, orange, and yellow of visible wavelengths. Here, the blue reveals hot regions where stars are actively forming. New Star was able to make high-energy X-ray images of the region around the supermassive black hole in the heart of our Milky Way galaxy. It discovered a hot haze created by a swarm of dead stars. When our universe began, it was a soup of hot hydrogen and helium gas. Thirteen point eight billion years later, we are surrounded by a rich mix of chemical elements, ranging from the nitrogen in the atmosphere to the calcium in your bones. This movie follows the evolution of the universe as portrayed by theorists using supercomputers. Filaments of hydrogen and helium form, shaped by the gravity of dark matter. In these filaments, clouds of dust and gas condense and form stars. The massive ones burn hydrogen and helium, creating progressively heavier elements, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and eventually iron. When these stars run out of nuclear fuel, they can explode in dramatic supernovae. As the universe grew older, countless generations of supernovae spewed chemical elements into the cosmos, where they condensed into galaxies, stars, and planets. How we know all this is, in practice, a dance between theorists and observers with telescopes, including infrared, optical, X-ray, and gamma-ray missions. Huge computational power and theoretical resources have gone into understanding the life cycles of stars. Here is a recent attempt to simulate a stellar explosion in a supercomputer. You can see here that the explosion halts. The authors of the experiment then inserted a theoretical sloshing of gas in the central part of the star, setting the supernova in motion. To find out whether this happens in nature, astronomers enlisted X-ray telescopes 
to take pictures of the remnants of supernova explosions. Here are images of the debris from the historical supernova remnant Cassiopeia A. The red and the green images were taken by the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which sees the universe in red and yellow and green colors. New Star has added the blue. This combination gives us a window into the heart of the explosion. These observations suggest that the shape of the explosion was bubbly, consistent with the sloshing mechanism predicted by theorists. Here's Cassiopeia A in all its panchromatic X-ray glory. High energy telescopes in space are revealing violent events in whole new ways. That includes the most violent of all, a gamma ray burst with the energy equivalent of one to the power of 30 H-bombs. That's one with 30 zeros after it. They're the most energetic explosions in the universe. They occur about once per Earth day and in every part of the sky. In the early days, they were the subject of intense speculation. Aliens in outer space, alien wars. This was an actual newspaper article In 1998, an Italian and Dutch satellite discovered that gamma ray bursts actually originate far outside our own galaxy. That means they must be extremely bright energetic events. A pair of satellites called Swift and Fermi were launched to study them in detail and to push the frontiers of high-energy astrophysics. To date, they have detected over 1,000 bursts. Every time the Swift or Fermi satellites detect a gamma ray burst, scientists get a page that sends them running to their computers to view the data. What they have learned is that gamma ray bursts are generated by supernovae so powerful, their cores collapse to a black hole. A small fraction of the matter flowing into the black hole escapes in jets. When the jet is aimed at us, we see it as a gamma ray burst. Gamma ray bursts are so intense that they can destroy the atmospheres of nearby planets. We appear to be safe, at least for the time being. Imagine a dark and clear night. Overhead, the Milky Way spreads out across the starry sky. 
The beauty and grandeur of this portion of our own galaxy beckons us to ask our deepest questions. What is the nature of this marvelous universe? How large is it? How did it come to be? And are we alone in this vast cosmos? Astrophysics, the study of the universe and how it works, is central to our quest for answers. We are beginning to find them, thanks to instruments sent up into space, beyond the limiting effects of our atmosphere. High energy missions, Fermi, Swift, New Star and Chandra, are uncovering a dynamic universe that is dramatically different from the tranquil tapestry we see with our eyes. They show that the cold, dark reaches of space are punctuated by turbulent forces. Black holes. Cosmic explosions. Bursts of radiation. That violent energy is very much a part of the universe. As we ask once again the great questions, we know that what we see is just the beginning of a story written in the great rumblings of the cosmos. A story that is unfolding still. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to answer a very interesting but hypothetical question. What if the smallest uh, discovered black hole so far decided to pass through our solar system or possibly approached our planet Earth relatively close? Let's find out what happens and let's discover what's going to happen to our solar system and to our planet. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in one of the previous videos, we actually got to visit the smallest black hole discovered so far, known as IGRJ 17091-3624. I also kind of explained to you how it was very likely created and what's going to happen to the system in the future. But in this video, let's actually assume a hypothetical example where this system actually decides to come close to our solar system and possibly even approaches our planet Earth. And specifically, I'm not really talking about this red dwarf that you see here, which is the partner star for IGRJ, um, but uh, I'm actually talking about the black hole itself. That's about three to maybe five masses of uh, the sun 
and it's about to swallow this red dwarf, I think. Yep, there you go, it's gone. So, let's assume that this star uh, somehow made it all the way to our solar system, even though it's technically like 28,000 light years away from us right now. Let's assume this is the future, or maybe there's a similar black hole that we haven't discovered yet that is actually on the way to our solar system and is going to basically fly through it at a distance of a few astronomical units away from the sun. We're going to aim right here. I don't know exactly where, but we're going to launch it at a velocity of about 240 kilometers per second, which is actually uh, an approximate speed of our sun around the uh, central black hole in the Milky Way um, galaxy. And so it's going to be moving relatively fast. And, and so here it is entering our solar system and it's actually not very big and it's close to invisible. It's very, very tiny. It's about um, five kilometers in radius only, five masses of the sun. So in comparison to Earth, this would be a very, very small object. This would be basically a size of uh, a kind of a large asteroid, kind of maybe uh, similar to the one that killed the dinosaur 65 million years ago. And it's moving through our solar system really, really fast. Um, so I'm going to accelerate time here. And let's just watch and see what happens to the entire solar system as this five masses of sun black hole passes through essentially the central region or the inner solar system. And you can kind of see that most of the planets have already kind of started to divert their orbits. It's actually a little bit easier to see if I if I look at, at this from from top here and if I accelerate time from from this angle. So you can see the Venus is already stretching away. Uh, Earth is kind of moving closer here as well. And there goes that black hole really, really, really fast. And look at that. So Venus gets slingshot maneuver from this uh, approach and the sun gets kicked out as well. All of the planets basically get uh, thrown out of the system. And I think for the most part, this actually will destroy our solar system. Most of the planets that are not... Um, captured back by the sun will actually stay in place right there. Like Saturn and Jupiter will actually very likely be orphan planets now. They'll have no parent star. And it's possible that this actually happened in the past. If if a star passed by another star, which is actually not a very common event, it's actually kind of rare. But if this happened, the um, one of the stars might actually fly away, leaving all of the other planets behind, leaving completely empty um, solar system that doesn't have a sun anymore or essentially all of these rogue planets that will now just kind of spread through the galaxies by themselves but as you can see um both mercury and earth and also a few asteroids are still kind of in orbit around the sun and earth actually seems to be wow just fine okay no never mind it's a little bit hot it's a little bit toasty 60 degrees celsius on average but nevertheless it's still around um so what about if this particular black hole approached really close to our planet Earth? Or better even, just for the sakes of making this very beautiful, let's go to a simulation known as Earth and the Moon. And let's assume that this black hole actually decides to capture Earth in its orbit relatively close to itself. So we're going to actually place uh, this black hole in an orbit of about 20,000-ish kilometers here. And so here we go, here's the black hole in um, orbit around our planet Earth, although technically it's going to be Earth orbiting the black hole. And it's actually very, very small, it's not very large. Uh, you can kind of take Great Pyramid of Giza here for comparison. You can see how small it actually is. So it's just a few kilometers in size. Now what's going to happen is that right away our Earth will actually start falling apart. And this is going to happen relatively quick, actually. There you go. There are those, those rocks flew out of Earth really quickly. And this is actually in milliseconds per second, so this is fifth of the actual real time. Um, now, this, the reason it's happening is because this tiny, tiny black hole, um, even though its mass is not actually very large, it's exerting a tremendous tidal force on our planet. And uh, the tidal forces here are so strong that chunks of Earth are essentially leaving the planet, making it slowly lose mass. You can actually check out the mass graph here just to see that it's actually going to uh, start losing mass over time. 
So if I were to accelerate this a little bit faster, you would see that this is actually going to happen uh, with quite a lot of intensity relatively fast. Let's actually change it to, okay, this is almost real time. So this is second per second. Now watch what's going to happen to our planet. So essentially, this is uh, in real time, and this is what you would most likely see if you were to look up into the skies. And actually, let's let's just stand somewhere, some somewhere that it's not destroyed yet, maybe right here. And so here we are on the surface of our planet Earth, and we're going to be looking into the skies and just uh, seeing what uh, what we see. Uh, I basically press C to 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 stand on the on the surface, and there's that black hole with all of the chunks of earth that have now become almost like a ring around our planet and this is the fire that's created um or i guess the molten earth that's created by all of the asteroids that do fall back to the planet and also the tidal forces that essentially um heat up the planet from the inside now let's run this for maybe a few minutes and just to, just so you can actually see what's going to happen to our planet eventually and also, don't forget that somewhere nearby, there is also our companion, the moon. There it is. And as you can imagine, the moon is actually also coming this way. And at some point, it's going to approach our planet Earth. And very likely, uh, either collide with the black hole or collide with, uh, with Earth. And so I'm going to run this just for fun, just to see what all of this turns into, because right now our planet is just being shredded. Essentially, the equator here is being bombarded with tremendous amounts of its own uh, matter, so basically Earth particles, and um, the rest of the planet seems to be, it looks okay, but it's really not. Tremendous tsunamis, earthquakes, huge tidal forces that will probably rip everyone apart, and at this point, everyone is essentially dead. But uh, the planet is still still kicking. It's still kind of round. It's still spherical. It is getting hot, though. It's getting really, really, really hot. Anyway, we're going to run this and observe what happens. And most of our planet is now covered in the molten part of, of, of the surface. And you can kind of see that even the moon started to slowly fall apart because of the tidal forces that are generated by the black hole. This is actually what it looks like from a distance here. And we're going to observe our approach from this angle for a little bit. But you can see that the, even the moon particles are striking back at the moon and um, ripping it, it, um, itself apart. And so here goes nothing. Here's, here comes the big collision between the Earth and the Moon, or possibly the black hole and the Moon. And this is going to be very likely very, very beautiful. So here we go. Ready? And... Let's slow down time here. And here it is. And it just kind of disappeared. Interesting. Alright, so that's basically a Moon being sucked into the black hole. And disappearing completely. Now, if I were to run this continuously for many, many hours, what you would eventually see is that, well, first of all, our Earth is going to start evaporating and create a very, very beautiful, um, very fiery looking accretion disk around IGRJ 1709. And I think I'm going to run this for maybe a few more in game minutes just to show you what it's going to look like later on. And so there go those uh, fiery particles, creating a very, very beautiful, very uh, alarmingly looking and very uh, interesting looking accretion disk. There's actually even a fragment that became its own moon, masses, 13 masses of the moon. And all of this is coming from Earth. Earth is essentially falling apart. It's already under three masses of the moon and it's creating these huge, huge particles and also a lot of other really interesting special effects. And so essentially, that's uh, what would happen if the smallest black hole in our galaxy actually um, orbited or came close to our planet Earth. And look at what this game is doing to all of these crazy particles. It's creating its own system. 
its own uh, planetary system around itself. And all of this is created from our beautiful planet Earth that's slowly losing more and more mass. And well, it didn't take long to create something absolutely marvelous and incredible looking. So there you go, this is actually what I was trying to create this whole time. A very beautiful, very unusual looking accretion disk made entirely out of our planet Earth. And hopefully this is something that you enjoyed watching. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. And you know what, consider coming back here tomorrow because you might learn something completely different about space, sciences or math. And anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Space out. And consider maybe supporting this channel on Patreon too because, you know, it does help me make better videos. But anyway, thank you so much for all of your support, guys. I appreciate all of your help, and I really enjoy making these videos, so all of your comments make my life so much happier. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And I'm just going to accelerate this even more, just to see what this whole thing turns into in the next few seconds.